In this brief video, we'll review some basic low-poly modeling techniques inside 3D Studio Max. As a general principle, it's a good idea to begin with a primitive geometry that closely approximates the final outcome. For example, I might start with a box that represents the final outcome of, let's say, a house that I was going to build. And then I might flatten this box into an editable poly by right-clicking and pulling down to the Convert to Editable Poly location inside the quad menu. With that box converted into a low poly model, I could then easily gain access to the polygon, vertex, segment, and edges that make up this geometry. And we might introduce a future ridge line here for this house across the top of the box by selecting the top polygon and selecting my snap, making sure the snap is set to midpoint and maybe vertex if necessary. And then we'll use the quick slice tool and then click and drag from one midpoint to the other midpoint and clicking again and now with a line down the middle of the building we can select that topological feature and pull it up into space to represent what would be the ridge line of our house. Okay, well you'll notice also that in this low poly model that I have here on the screen that we can't really see the edges and it's very important that as you work on low poly models that you work with smooth and highlights or hidden lines so you can actually see what you're getting and then also make sure that you have edge faces turned on. So with edge faces turned on it allows us to actually see the topological features much better. When we have a low poly model we're not limited to simply adding segments and we're not limited to just simply transforming these by move scale and rotate. But take note that if I grab a face, a line, a segment, an edge, we can use move, scale, and rotate and manipulate the geometry further just like we would use SketchUp for example. I could also use my scale tool on this same geometry and we could resize this side of the house by scaling, in this case uniformly by selecting the middle of the scale transform gizmo. I could also scale this in one axis or another by selecting that axis on the transform gizmo. Same could be the case um, with rotate, although a rotation of this polygon would be uh, extremely messy because we don't have adequate subdivisions in the rest of this geometry to make a rotation make any sense in the end. We can also use a whole series of tools down here in the edit polygons area. If I pull down here to edit polygons we can find extrude for example. Now, in Extrude or in any of these tools, you see two buttons. One is a button that allows you to manually extrude. So we would click and drag, and now we have a whole series of polygons that have been extruded off of this one face. Alternatively, there is a window button next to it. And the window button has a series of settings that pop up that would allow us to type in some numeric value that we want the extrusion to be. And in addition, we have some other options. Are we extruding just this face? Or if we have a whole series of faces selected, are we extruding all of the faces in unison, by a local normal, or by individual polygon? Let's take a look at what happens when we do that. So here I've selected all four sides of my little house. And if I use the extrude tool, uh, at present it's extruding all four faces together. And they're all moving in a positive direction here, you see. So if I do it by local normal, it's going to be extruding perpendicular to each of the four faces. And this is being extruded as one cohesive geometry. So you see it's all unified. And another alternative is by polygon. So each individual polygon will have an extrusion coming off of it and they will all be at this length. So we also have, uh, for example, inset. Now with inset, it allows us to set up basically an offset on a polygon from which we might generate further geometries. I'm going to select this face here and use inset and we see that we can adjust the value once again and once that we have this inset produced and once again you can also see it's by group or by polygon so we could do the same thing across the, a larger selection area. We can then manipulate this further. Let's just say for the sake of conversation that um, now that we have this specific polygon we're going to use the hinge from edge tool and if I select the window for hinge from edge 
and then we're going to pick an edge on which we're going to hinge this. Let's select this upper edge. We'll see that this is hinged out and we could make adjustments to the angle of that hinge and we could also add extra subdivisions in here. So if you had a bellows-like geometry, um, this might be how you accomplish it. So this face has been hinged out of uh, its original location. Okay, and if we want to get fancy, um, I've deselected the house and I'm using the create shapes line. I'm going to drag a spline here. I'm going to be using this as a path. Uh, I have it set to corner and smooth and I'm going to click and drag a kind of smooth arc out here onto the screen and right click to release. So with that arc or path now drawn, if I go back to selecting my geometry, I'm going to select uh, this face here and we'll go back to our edit polygon area and we see also we have an option here of extrude along spline. If I select the window for that, I can pick the spline along which I want this face to be extruded. And if I click the spline now, you'll see this polygon has now been extruded following that path. Um, there are other things that we could do, align to normal, so this is going to be extruding spline now coming off the normal of the geometry. Let's take that off. Uh, I kind of like that it's being extruded where the path has been drawn instead. We can add extra subdivisions in here to make this more or less smooth. We can even taper the amount um, over the distance of that extrusion and we can taper the curve so it has greater or lesser bulge. There's all kinds of fancy things we can do here. Now in addition we can grow geometries together and if you look at the house here uh, that I've got selected, let's let go of that and let's go ahead and throw out our spline for right now. Let's, uh, let's duplicate this just to, to make things interesting. Turn off my snap. I'm going to select um, shift and drag and make sure that this is a copy not an instance. So we have two versions of the geometry here and just to make this more evident uh, let's rotate one of them um, slightly and reposition it um, a little bit uh, further back in the scene. There we go and we can confirm and plan see so they're about in this position and these at present are two separate geometries. What we can do is join them together into one poly mesh. So if I select the geometry on the left hand side and inside my edit poly tools I'm going to come over to where I find edit geometry attach. Now if you've got a long list of geometries you could select the window and you would see them all show up in the window. We only have one other geometry in here so we could simply select you know, alternatively, you just click on the attach button and then click on what you want to attach to this. Now, as soon as we attach these two together, they're in fact one editable poly, even though they're two separate elements. Uh, that's where the element topological level comes into play. Now, with that selected, see, we can then select individual elements within one mesh. It is possible to have a mesh that has discrete parts, as you can see right here. Okay, so with these two elements inside one mesh, what we can do next is select the opposing polygons here using my control key to pick up and my alt key to pan and um, orbit around this. I've got these two polygons selected. I'll pull down to one other tool down here we haven't looked at yet called the bridge tool. And if I click on the window portion of bridge by default it's just simply going to play connect the dots and join all of this together but not unlike we saw extrude along spline we can add additional segmentation in here to make this more smooth we can make an adjustment to this in terms of tapering um, we can have a bias where that tapering shifts from one side to the next as you can see there and we can smooth this out more or less okay so let's just leave that the way it is um, in addition, of course, we can twist. Now, there's a couple of other features in here we haven't really looked at. Outline basically is like an offset. Um, so if I was to take this polygon here and select it, and we use the outline tool, you will see that um, it basically um, is a way to scale or offset the selection set. Um, so this is now nine and a half inches approximately inset from where it was. 
the other thing that we might need to take advantage of is editing the triangulation. Now on this particular feature it's not going to make um, a huge amount of difference but if you had a more organic shape you might need to get inside the geometry and manipulate um, the triangulation that's there. Now even though this is built from quadrilaterals every quadrilateral is still subdivided into triangles and um, if I select, um, let's just select all the polygons on this side of our poly mesh if we go into edit triangulation and we zoom in here you'll notice that um, each of the polygons now is revealing um, how it's being triangulated. Now it could be the case that you know as something's triangulated let's say this split and the mesh lands here then we're going to have sometimes an irregular sort of buckling. Um, it's a good idea to have these things converge um, in a similar vertex. So for example this segment here, I want to rotate it around so it actually originates from this same point. Now if I use the turn tool in here and I click on that edge, you'll see that it's been reoriented so now all of this triangulation comes off of here. We might do the same with this side and then we might do the same with this side. So now they all kind of logically converge in ways that would make it possible for us to manage some of the, the surfaces a little bit better. Now something else that may be necessary, let's just uh, say for the sake of conversation that we want to operate on a few of the polygons that make up a side of some object. I'm going to grab this surface here, let's pull it out. Let's say that we want to shave off some portion of this building and um, we don't want to affect the rest of the polygons. Then what we could do is grab all of those polygons or some collection of topological elements and we're going to detach those from the geometry. So temporarily I'm going to detach this okay object one is going to be created out of this. You can give it a name. I'm just going to call it XXX for right now will detach it. We could detach this within the mesh in which case it's not separated. We can also detach this as a clone so it's a copy and we then haven't compromised this in any fashion. I'm going to detach this, we'll do something to it and then reattach it. Let's go ahead and click OK and you'll notice it is now grayed out. It's not highlighted within the bounding box of our editable poly. Let's let go of the editable poly and now we can get a hold of our new cloned XXX object. 